Welcome to our second video in our short series on how to use the 3VT cash book system. In our first video, I showed you how to do the basic setup. We covered the basics of a chart of account and we also did some simple data entry in and out of the new business current account and then went on to look at a simple bank reconciliation. So here in part two, I want to build up on that. And um, first I want to look at using a different account for business expenses. You're not always going to use the current account for everything. Um, in the first example, I'm going to look at where the business is, maybe a shop or a pub or a market trader, where customers are paying you in cash. So the particular problem with cash is that you're handling it. There's money coming in and money going out and you need some way of pulling it all together to prove how much money you've got in and prove what you did with it. The last thing in the world that you want is doubt as to where the money went. Some robust um, bomb proof record recording is absolutely essential and certainly if you are in this sort of cash trader business you really want to keep some form of cash record some book or cash sheets next to your till or in a book in your pocket so you can really record the cash money in and the cash money out immediately the moment it happens unless you've got that minute by minute record you'll have major problems trying to put the details into any form of cash any form of accounting software you really do need the basic raw data of what came in and where it went in this case um, VAT comes with an account called petty cash which isn't particularly helpful so the first thing we need to do is open a new account we can do this in one of two ways. The first way we can go into setup at the top there, um, click on accounts, click on bank, and then you've got the four bank accounts. It comes up with a current account, deposit account, loan account, and petty cash. It's not really petty cash when a customer's paying you in cash. It's far from petty. Petty cash is really meaning the tin you've got in your desk drawer where you've got. 10 or 20 pounds in and you use it to pay the window cleaner or buy a pint of milk. So that's petty cash, it's petty, that's the whole point of it. What we need is a proper cash account for takings coming in and money going out. So we open a new account, just click on new, and the name is basically just cash or cash takings. And click on OK. We don't need to worry about any of the other bank account setup details. Just give it a name, that's good enough. And now we close. And now we see we've, in the bank accounts, we've now got five accounts. We've got the new cash takings account. So we need, let's assume we've traded today. We're a shop. We've sold a lot of stuff over the counter. We've had a load of cash in and we've spent a bit of cash on purchases we've paid someone's wages and this proprietor's also taken some money out for his own living expenses so he's got a little sheet of paper somewhere or his notebook which has shown exactly what's come in and what's gone out and what he's got left over and like i say we can't do the bookkeeping until we've got that basic raw data so let's just click on the money in, money out. And this time, we're, when it says bank account, we're selecting cash takings. Now, in any accounting system, it says bank account, but you've got to get it out of your mind that these are just bank accounts. Basically, a bank account in accounting bookkeeping terms means a pot of money. So a current account is a pot of money that's sat in the current account. The deposit account is a pot of money that sat in a deposit account. But when we come to cash takings, 
somewhere you'll have a, a till or a cash drawer or a money satchel where the takings from the customers are being put into that and payments out for wages or supplies are coming out of that satchel. So it's another pot of money. So in effect, it is another bank account in terms of bookkeeping. So that's why we have a, a, this bank account called cash takings. So at the end of the day, this guy's cashed up. His little notebook shows that he's received a sum of money from his various customers in cash. So if we look down at the bottom here, from the first video, you'll remember one's for a payment, two's for a checkout, and three's for a receipt. Payment being money out, receipt being money in. So it's money in, so it's number three, which is a receipt. It automatically shows today's date. And we put in the total, the um, narrative of daily takings per takings book. And we'll just, so let's just make some figures up. It's taken £975 today in sales, in cash sales. So it's income, it's business income, and it's sales in the analysis. So now we need to know what's, what it's, at the moment it's showing the end balance is £975. But he's added up all the money in his till or his cash tin or his money satchel. And obviously there's not all that in there because he's paid a lot of stuff out as well. The first thing he's done is paid some wages because today was the day that his assistant needed paying. So it's a payment out, number one. It's the same date. And the assistant's name is Joe Smith. And his wages were £225. So again, it's a business expense. And if we look right down at the bottom of the list, we have wages and salaries. So we have 975 in, and so far he's paid 225 out. So the, the accounts are showing £750. So, but that's not all he's paid today. He also bought some stamps from the post office. So the same date, payment out, post office. He spent a five pound on stamps, expenses, and we do have a code for postage. He also paid out to his supplier, who are called Acme Distribution. This is where he buys all of the products that he's selling at his shop or his market stall and he bought £400 worth of supplies from them. Now this is cost of sales because it's it's things he's buying which he's selling. So that's purchases. That's as opposed to an expense which is like overheads, things that he's not selling, he's just using. So now he's, after those three payments, the end balance is showing 345 quid. And that is remarkably lucky because he's just added up his money in his little bag and he does have £345 in there. So we know that the bookkeeping is right because the figure it says here is the same as the figure that he's actually got in his hand. So now he's got this £345 in his hand and he needs to know... Well, he needs to decide what to do with it. He wants some for himself because it's a weekend and he's, he's going out for the weekend. So he'll need some cash. But he also needs to put some in the bank because in, he knows there's some payments coming out of the bank in the next few days. So the first thing he does, he decides to take 150 quid for his own use. So we put it down as Fred Bloggs. £150 is taken out, so it's a payment again. And if we remember from the early, earlier video, it's capital account, but this time it's drawings because it's money coming out. And now the remaining 195 is going to pay to the bank. So we do this as a payment. Same date, because he's going to take it to the bank on his way. And we'll just put it in as cash to bank. 195 and this time it's the analysis ledger is bank and the money is going to the current account. 
So it's coming from the cash takings account to the current account. And now we see his end balance is zero, which is exactly what we want the bookkeeping to show. And we've just proved where the, mo the money's come in and we've proved where it's gone to. And for a shop or a pub or a market trader or maybe a small cafe or a guest house, this is what you need to be doing every day with the VT cash book software or any software. It's a matter of putting it on and making sure that these figures mean something to you. Now, some shops or pubs would have a cash balance, would have, they'd have a float, maybe £50 or £100 of change. In which case, try to keep that float the same. So you'd have a start balance of 50 quid, end balance of 50 quid, being the money that's in the float. By that sort of simple routine will keep your bookkeeping simple. It'll f enable you to highlight if this didn't balance to the figure you wanted it to at the end. You know that you've missed something out or you've put a figure in wrong or you've put a figure in twice. It's an awful lot easier to correct your bookkeeping on a day by day basis as you do it rather than blitz it, do a whole year at a time, find out it doesn't balance. And then you'll spend literally hours and hours trying to work out where, where it has gone wrong. In the long term, it's far quicker and less stressful just to do it right in the first place. So a decent bookkeeping system like this and a bit of discipline will mean you can do it right in the first place. So that's the cash. Click on save and close. Now, if we look back to display and profit and loss, we can start to see some meat on the bones, as it were. We've got the sales income coming in. Now, if you remember from the earlier video, the early video, £50 he did some work for Mrs. Smith. And now we've got the takings from today. So he's got £1,025 of sales income. He's got £400 of purchases. That's the money he's spent on stock. And then we have some expenses. There were his business cards. Oh, sorry, that was his website, some postage stamps, there were his business cards and those were his wages. So now this guy's made £332 profit. Okay, so that's... Video 1 showed the basic current account in and out. Video 2, we've moved on to the cash takings in and out. Now, before we leave Video 2, I just want to go on to a third aspect, which is where you've used a private bank account for a business transaction. So if, for example, you've bought some stock using a private credit card, so it's money in, money out again. But now what we need to look at is the bank account, the how it was paid. Now, it wasn't the cash takings. It wasn't from the current account. It wasn't from the deposit account. It isn't from a loan account and it wasn't from petty cash. So what we need to do is open a new bank account, which comes back to the idea of pots of money. Your private credit card is like taking money out of a private pot for a business expense. So we want new bank account. We, this is a different way of a different way of, of entering a new bank account. Create a new bank account, and this time it's private credit card. And again, we don't need to worry about all the details, just put the name in and OK. And now we've got a new bank account called Private Credit Card. And it's a number one for a payment out. Today's the day. And this is to a different distributor called Z Distribution for some more purchases that he's bought to sell in his market stall or his pub or whatever this guy does. So he's bought £250 worth of stuff from Z Distribution. And it's cost of sales again, purchases again. So, it, But the money is from the private credit card and it's to be spent on cost of sales purchases. So if we click on that, click and close, we now see that back to the profit and loss, display profit and loss, the purchases are now showing both those bills. That one that he paid using the um, cash and that one that he's paid using the private credit card. If we just hover over the page shows you cash takings and private credit card. And that's common to the whole system. 
you can just click up click over it and it, the good thing is it lets you drill down so from your profit and loss account you can click on purchases and it gives you the list of purchases making up that figure now as you as you move forward you'd have tabs down here showing previous year future years so you you can start to compare year by year by year as you build up more transactions and you work through uh, transactions so at first there's not really much going on in here but once you've gone your first year and you're into year two you can do year by year comparisons which are very useful the only other thing we haven't really looked at yet is a balance sheet which is from display down to balance sheet now on a cash book basis of money in money out which is what we're doing the balance sheet isn't particularly helpful a balance sheet is usually a snippet of a snippet in time showing what assets and liabilities you had now when you're doing a basic cash book bookkeeping you're not putting in your stock levels you're not putting in your equipment you're not putting in money owed to you and money owed by you so the balance sheet will only ever be showing the bank accounts so up here you can see the current account stands at £682 and we click on that we can see what it is and from video one we'd reconciled the first three transactions but now today we've paid in 50 and we've paid in 195 so they're not yet on internet banking but once they've cleared the bank account we can see there's going to be £682.50 in the bank which is the asset, the bank balance but 250 is owed on the credit card that's what's been paid by the private credit card and down at the bottom here we've got the profits the capital introduced that was the money he paid into open his accounts and the drawings is the 150 pound he took in cash from today's takings so the the balance sheet is a, is a sort of control sheet you really do need to live with these figures and relate to them if you looked at the balance sheet of the current account showed 682 pound and you, you knew in your own mind that isn't the money that you've got in the bank account even with the items in transit that haven't cleared yet you've made an error in your bookkeeping it's not rocket science it's not some mumbo jumbo you've done something wrong and so you need to look back and find out what you've done wrong you should be able to look at your profit and loss account and balance sheet and identify these, these figures they should all mean something to you if they don't like I say you've done something wrong and you need to re review what you've done so that's basically the end of the second video um, where we've looked at moving on from just the current account to also dealing with cash coming in and dealing with private payments being paid out in our next video we're going to look at the scenario where you're an internet seller and you're selling things via PayPal or via credit card merchant account, which, as you may have guessed, involves opening new account, new bank accounts again in VT. So that is um, the third video, and I hope to see you for that.